Marie and the Orange Fish There once was a very rich merchant who lived near a bubbling brook with his wife and beautiful little daughter, Marie. Ah, fish! We all know how much you love eating fish. Yes, thank you, my wife. Years passed by, and the merchant's daughter grew up to become a beautiful maiden, and her loveliness was revered across the land. And soon, the tales of her beauty reached far and wide before catching the attraction and attention of Prince Ryder. Really? I want to meet her at once! We will send the word out that Prince Ryder wants to meet her. No, I will go to her house myself. The next day, as Marie was soaking her clothes in the creek, Prince Ryder came by to see what he had heard of her beauty was true. Stunned by her curly black hair and her sparkling eyes, the prince knew that he was smitten by her. At once, he went up to speak with her. Ahem. Oh, your highness, how may I... Call me Ryder, please, and I am here to meet you. Me? I have heard tales of your exquisite beauty. And I must say, no one could have explained through words how beautiful you really are. <laughs> I am honored your high, um, Prince Ryder. Mind if I sit with you? <laughs> and thus began their chapter of love and friendship. Every day, Prince Ryder would come to meet her by the stream. There, they spent an abundance amount of time together, sitting by the stream, talking about their dreams, and laughing under the beaming sun's rays while the birds chirped beautiful tweets. Days passed, and Marie and Prince Ryder were now head over heels in love with each other. What is it? Um, nothing. Tell me, Marie, I insist. I, I made something for you, but I am embarrassed now. For you are a royal person, and this is an ordinary something. Show me. Wow, smells delicious. You made this for me? Yes. Mm, this is delicious. Thank you so much, my love. Um, I mean, Marie. Did you, did you just call me your love? I did. I love you, Marie. I want to marry you. Oh, I love you too, Ryder. Love bloomed under the blue sky, unaware that someone was not pleased. That someone was Marie's father, who was extremely protective of his daughter and disapproved of the concept of love. Goodbye, my love. Wait for me here tomorrow when I shall come to meet you. Saying that, Prince Ryder went back to his palace and Marie returned home only to overhear her parents arguing over Prince Ryder. No means no. I will not tolerate this. If she doesn't stop seeing that prince, then I will have to take matters into my hands. My child, where were you? I... I... You should not meet Prince Ryder. Your father won't... At that moment, the merchant retraced his steps back to the living room. You are too young and naive to be frolicking around all day with the prince. You shall stop seeing him this instant. Father, I can stop seeing him, but how will I stop loving him? For this heart is his, and so is my soul. Committed to her love for Ryder, Marie continued to meet Prince Ryder. And this did not go well with the merchant, who came up with a solution. He went to the woods just beyond the creek, where lived a witch called Marana. Are you sure this is what you desire? Yes, please. I want the prince out of her life. Remember, the spell once placed cannot be reversed. <laughs> I understand. That day, as the sun glided in the sky, Prince Ryder came to meet Marie as usual. But Marie wasn't there. The witch who was on the far side of the stream with the merchant, hiding, dipped her wand in the water and pointed it directly at the prince. As the old man does desire, 
you in the stream to splash and flop. Oh, change thee into orange fire, and I will make you swim non-stop. <laughs> As she chanted the spell, a magical mist shrouded the prince. He was immediately changed into a bright orange fish. In fish form, the prince flopped into the air and came down in the brook with a large splash. The current of the water took the poor prince away from Marie's house. When Marie came to the brook, she was surprised to not see Prince Ryder there. Maybe he is running a little late, she thought, and waited for him all day. But the prince did not come. That evening, she walked back into her house sadly and was greeted by her unusually cheery father. Days passed, and poor Marie would sit by the brook every day with a bowl of food that the prince liked. There she'd wait, crying and wondering if she had done anything to offend him. Where art thou, my love? It has been so long. My heart yearns for you. With you it now belongs. Please come to me, my love. Please come to me. And as her teardrops fall into the water, a strong current is formed, and suddenly a stunning bright orange fish emerges from within it. Sunlight reflecting off the brook, it was as if this fish was wearing a gleaming golden crown. Marie looked at its eyes and at once knew who it was, for she had seen those eyes up close and had fallen in love with them. My, my love? Is that, is that you? But the fish did not say anything. Instead, with sad eyes that looked at Marie longingly, it nodded as tears rolled out its eyes. Marie cried too as she could not understand why the universe had played such a cruel joke on her. But love is love, and it doesn't bend in front of the cruel world. Over the next few days, Marie would carry food to the brook, sit by it, sing her song of melancholy, and the orange fish would swim up to her. She'd feed her love, and the orange fish would bring her gifts from the stream. Brilliant colored stones, musical reeds, and berries that had fallen into the water. There she would sit all day, staring at the orange fish, and sometimes touching its fins. This, the merchant noticed, and immediately understood. Furious, he stormed towards the brook. He grabbed the fish with his bare hands and went to his house. Marie ran after him, pleading and begging, Father, please! But her daughter's plight fell on deaf ears. The old man went home and ordered the servant to cook the fish. And when it was done, he ate it mercilessly while his daughter cried and pleaded. <laughs> You should not have done that. Huh? You think I went to Witch Morana and got the prince changed to a fish? Only so that my daughter would fall in love with his aquatic form? Never! What? You are too naive to... And just as he was saying those words, his stomach inflated like a balloon and his face swelled up like a toad. What? 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 <gasps> Water thrust out of his mouth, and with it came out the enchanted orange fish, along with several other little fish that the merchant had consumed in his life. Sliding in the water, they reached the furrow through which they swam to the brook. Marie ran, chasing after the orange fish, but it was gone. Oh, my love! My love! But Marie was not going to give up. She at once stood up and began to run towards the woods. Witch Morana, please, please, reverse your spell, for I cannot live without Prince Ryder. Marie, what your father has done is for your own good. But Morana, how is it good when my heart beats in the rhythm of his name? And if I cannot live with him, then I might as well die. Please bring him back, please. Witch Morana looked at Marie and realized how much she loved Prince Ryder. Uh, 
I cannot reverse my spell, because if I do, I will lose all my powers. And it will affect me in a way that I will turn into a fish instead of him. But what I can do for you is turn you into a fish, so that you can live with him. Can you sacrifice your life as a human for him? With all my heart and soul. All right, come with me. And so, Marie went to the brook with Marana. It pains me to turn you into a fish, Marie, but I am moved by your love. And saying that, she pointed her wand at Marie, and the beautiful girl soon turned into a red fish and went down into the brook with a splash. There they united, Marie and Prince Ryder, in love's eternal judgment. But amidst all of this, no one cared to ask a mother what she wanted. Yes, Marie's mother, who was looking for her daughter, had watched witch Marana turn her girl into a fish. <laughs> Marie, my child, my love, my life. Oh, heaven, is this why I brought up my girl only to see her turn into a fish? At that moment, a little red fish, who was Marie, swam up to her. It looked at the woman with watery eyes, and seeing her mother cry, teardrops rolled out of its eyes. The red fish seemed as if it wanted to say a lot of things, but could not. At that moment, Marie's father came running, and seeing the little red fish gave out a loud cry. <laughs> oh no, my daughter! What have I done? I should not have done this. I should not have taken my daughter's love away from her. <laughs> oh, Morana! The great witch, please forgive me and bring them back in the human forms. I have been a cruel father. I have pushed my daughter away. Please bring them back. My life is incomplete without my daughter. What will we do with our lives without her? And, and her mother will never be able to live with this pain. My daughter. Uh, I cannot bring them back. I cannot reverse the spell. Because if I do, I will lose all my powers and turn into a fish myself. The merchant and his wife cried, and the fish Marie and Ryder looked at them sadly. This moved Morana's heart. You made me do this, but I have sinned as well by playing a part in this and with their lives. The world needs such lovers who stand the test of time and oppression for such true love. I will happily sacrifice myself. Saying so, Marana pointed her wand at the stream, and suddenly from beneath the water body emerged Marie and Prince Ryder. My daughter! And as they reunited, with a sudden burst of light, which Marana turned into a fish and plopped into the air and came down the brook with a large splash. You have sacrificed your life for us. This will never be forgotten. You are indeed a good soul. We are forever indebted. Well, you all know what happened next. The merchant apologized to Prince Ryder, who forgave him with a hug. Marie and Prince Ryder were married in a grand wedding. And as for Marana, she still comes to the brook every week. And there, Marie and Ryder feed her food, for her sacrifice was ultimate, and it helped true love win against all odds.